I don't know you, but uh, despite being still the month of May, despite being uh, what is uh, the Saturday when I'm recording that will bring us finally to the edition number 107 of the Indianapolis 500 miles, I was tweaking and playing around uh, with GT Legends. I have to start to say thank you very much to you all, absolutely, but uh, a special thank you to Dimitar of Turbo Racing Channel, please follow our friends driven by passion, because uh, learning from watching him running GT Legends and uh, learning uh, from him some tips and tricks, how to install cars, how to install tracks. And then I found a video that I will publish on screen on how to create uh, cups, uh, challenges in GT Legends that is more or less driven by a sort of uh, different type of uh, filtering and uh, regrouping uh, attitude and uh, engine basically. I have found a way to look on the web on the race department website on uh, Albi Turbe mm. I pronounce it wrongly, sorry I apologize with the great owners and creators of the website but uh, the, apart my bad German language welcome to the road to Le Mans where today we will simulate 24 hours in 24 minutes running a sort of first decade when uh, from the Le Mans disaster of the 1955 where unluckily a lot of people died and a lot of people has been injured up to the mid 60s before the famous story of Ford versus Ferrari Le Mans was uh, a public road uh, layout with this incredible 24 hours endurance race born in 1923 to challenge cars manufacturers to demonstrate that they were better than horses or whatever other type of form of transportation and motorsport did uh, what was supposed to be done have challenges push uh, manufacturers to improve and uh, after the Le Mans disaster maybe something has changed so I wanted to take this 1955-1964 ish period where uh, Jaguars, Ferraris, Aston Martin, Triumph, Mercedes, Shelby were uh, all there who later, who earlier and so as you know I like to regroup some decades or some particular years and uh, put them together and uh, have a try on uh, finding uh, if there's something special between technologies, between uh, drivers and today I want to bring you back uh, almost 80 years ago sorry for not finding older cars to be used on GT Legends but I think that we go back quite a bit and uh, I will try within uh, all the time frame from now, end of May, to the real 24 hours of Le Mans that I will attend in person, like I did for Daytona and for Sebring, because uh, I wanted to nail uh, one year straight all the three most important endurance races for Grand Tourers and prototypes. Le Mans to me has a special meaning, even if uh, by night in the 50s you basically didn't see anything like on screen now and uh, a part of this maybe you were lucky enough to at least be a tourist to attend uh, a race special like this and why not racing uh, at least briefly that particular era that particular period thanks to all the materials 
you can find on the web nowadays and maybe have a glimpse of uh, what was racing back then. So I will briefly present you the cars involved the 36 slots for today, also the one chosen now sitting in the pit and uh, see you in a couple of seconds on track. So from a pure uh, selection, thanks to a video found uh, on uh, YouTube, I've been more or less uh, capable to create a fake cup also not touching what was the original GT Legends we are playing with the hands-on uh, theme and uh, there was this uh, possibility to create a fake cup under a sort of uh, driver unblocking all cars, all tracks, etc. And so the, the setup was created with let me allow Aleman 5564 just to embrace uh, the first year used by some cars seen here and there and uh, the last year used I would say before the arrival of the Ford GT40s that maybe did something uh, quite different compared to the past but from the mid 50s up to the beginning of the 60s apart from the dominating Ferraris, uh, the dominating Jaguars and so on there was for sure an unexpected uh, evolution very quick of cars I would uh, mention the arrival of uh, disc brakes thanks to the effort sustained at Le Mans as well uh, as uh, many other changes. Disc brakes uh, are just an example moving from what was uh, the usage of uh, drum brakes but if you, you may remember the opening uh, uh, back hood of the Mercedes if I'm not wrong to slow down the car not using just brakes but also using uh, a sort of uh, rear door opening and making uh, resistance against the air I mean there were many solutions then there was the 55 uh, unluckily unfortunate tragic edition of Le Mans with uh, more than 80 people that died and more than 80 injured and so on but I would say after the Le Mans disaster maybe the decade that followed was in some way special at least from a technology point of view also because there there were mainly cars uh, coming from the Gran Turismo category nonetheless uh, thanks to Ferrari has become something that nowadays we still continue to call Gran Turismo also because the, two, the model 250 GTO was exactly the acronym for Gran Turismo homologata, Grand Tourer homologated and so with this uh, 60 edition of Le Mans from a layout point of view I am going to present you some beauties I've regrouped uh, some Shelby Cobras 289 cubic inches some uh, Aston Martin DBR1 DBR2 and DBR4 close to the end of the decade maybe this car was also involved into some movies of uh, Agent 007 I suppose Austin Healy the 100S as well as the 3000 talking about uh, small UK cars we cannot forget the Triumph TR4 or the TR4A going back to the Shelby World the Daytona Coupe or Coupe already present within uh, GT Legends Mercedes was for sure uh, already famous for running the 300 SLR model as well as the Gullwing at least in the Mille Miglia Maserati with the 450 S model Colin Chapman was uh, running around Europe the Lotus 7 series 1 Jaguars were uh, absolutely dominating for forces in the 50s with the D-Type between 55 and 57 then arrived the E-Type in the version Coupé or Roadster but there were also some Italian uh, small uh, brand, the Iso Grifo for example or Bizzarrini coming from an engineer that had a fight with Enzo Ferrari and so has left uh, 
what was the Ferrari main work uh, team to produce a car on their own. Ferrari, as said, uh, arrived to the Mille Miglia, to the Le Mans, to Sebring, and I don't remember how many races with the model 375 plus. Like it was uh, the time for the Ferrari Testarossa 250, that was already a strong winning car, but mainly I suppose that the 250 GTO that won many editions or at least well placed itself in many editions was uh, I would say the new era for Gran Turismo homologated cars and so was mainly maybe the most iconic Gran Turismo homologated model and uh, from there it has been then the arrival of the Ford GT40, Porsches having small liters uh, cars then becoming a dominant force in the 70s with, with uh, what was the high 5 liters car model 917K. But before all of that the 1966 Ford vs Ferrari theme movie it was uh, a decent summary to have these brands and these models around the most famous endurance race. And so today, if you don't mind, uh, I would like to dedicate 24 minutes to the 24 hours of Le Mans, just tweaking here and there GT Legends to have uh, this that you see on the screen. I hope you will like it. It will be really a short episode and uh, we will drive maybe the most iconic and the most uh, recent GT homologated car and we will try for the first time in my life a professional game setup for what is uh, GT Legends and uh, up to this point I must say thank you very much thank you very much to Dimitar of uh, Turbo Racing Channel for learning from him uh, some tips and tricks how to install cars how to install tracks and also on screen you see the video I did follow to create these 36 slots so 35 opponents and us as the 36th car on track to battle a fake 24 minutes simulating 24 hours of Le Mans then obviously the 4 hours edition that I like to do since last year will be reproposed with the Around the World in 24 hours series season 2 Maybe I will do the same uh, with the WEC, but I don't know yet. Maybe I will do another 24 minutes race with something else, we will see. But uh, mainly this is uh, what I wanted to gift, if you allow me, to our Ikes Racing community as a sort of road to Le Mans Centenary Edition. See you on track. And so let's start very quickly the 20 minutes available for the qualification. Obviously I'm not going to run the Ferrari 250 GTO. We will uh, wait a bit and uh, then we will uh, have a look to the classification already happened. Obviously with the simulating 60 times quicker you can see the moon uh, running very quick like a racing car but uh, it is meant just to have uh, more or less 24 minutes of race and have a complete day passed in 24 minutes so this will affect also qualification and time weather and so on and so we can maybe declare finished the brief qualification session with Master Gregory and the Maserati 450 starting from the pole position 3 minutes 48 seconds 0.5 Harry Shell with another Maserati, very close. Maurice Twentignan with another Maserati, and then fourth, one Manuel Fangio. Top four positions for the Maserati 450S. Maybe we can also see a bit better like this. The classification, fifth, the first Ferrari, the 375 plus. Then Jean Berat with another Maserati. Pierre Levesque, P7, first of the, of the others with the first Mercedes 300 SLR 
de la Isogrifo, Paul Frere, the driver journalist with the Jaguar D-Type 57, Carol Shelby driving an Aston Martin DBR2, followed by Whitehead with another Aston Martin DBR2. In P12 we find Frolian Gonzalez, Ferrari 375 Plus, then Luigi Musso, Ferrari 250 Testarossa, Wilson with the other Isogrifo, Peter Collins with the Ferrari 250 Testarossa, together with Wolfgang von Trips with the other 250 Testarossa, Tony Brooks, P17 with a DBR1 Aston Martin, Carl Kling with the other Mercedes, Mike Hawthorne with the Jaguar D-Type, one of the oldest cars present today in 1955, Roy Salvadori with a DBR1 Aston Martin, Sterling Moss with a tiny Austin Healey 100S, we arrive then to Dan Garley, Phil Hill, Mark Donoghue and Ken Miles with an IC Shelby Cobra 289. We finish then the qualification with Atwood, Aston Martin DB4, Mueller, Bailey with the first Jaguar E-Type if I'm not wrong, Murray Walker with a Triumph TR4A, Childs with an Austin Elite 3000, Buell with the other Triumph TR4, as you can see, lap times are slower one minute compared to the pole position. Colin Chapman with the Lotus 7 Series 1. Not raced in qualification. Caron with the Shelby Daytona Coupe. Bob Tullius with the Jaguar E-Type Roadster. David Piper with the 250 GTO as well as us in a fake Ike's Racing all unblocked Ferrari 250 GTO. That's it. We can continue to race save the game. I've prepared anyway a, an easy car setup that will be enough for five laps run at four minutes plus some seconds. It will become a 24 minutes race. The car drinks uh, quite a lot so I will keep 130 liters to cover almost the double of what is uh, the duration of the race. The rest is just uh, for demonstration purposes. If you are ready, I'm ready. Let's go to race the first, I would say, modern decade for Le Mans from 55 to 64. Okay, just for fun, a 24 minutes race simulating 24 hours, so every minute will be a one full hour. From a full weather point of view and time frame. And luckily this version of the 60s, third gear, has not the start from the pit lane like it was back then. There is another version of the 70s that has this function. It is a conversion from R Factor 1, but for some strange reason this one doesn't work as it should. I'm not used to change gear with my left hand. As you can see, very often I still have to have a look to the gear shift. Tony Brooks and Mr. Buell already retired. But we have passed the Dunlop Bridge, we have passed uh, Tetra Rouge and now the Ferrari can give uh, much more than uh, the Murray Walker Triumph, the Bob Tullius Jaguar. So we will try to at least stay in the pace of David Piper that is driving the green in front of us, Ferrari 250 GTO capable of 250, 260, 270 kilometers per hour. Thank you to Mr. Bailey. Not a great move.
while approaching the new Sun King back then flat out but not if you are in a group with slower cars Mr. Mueller trying to kill us Dan Garney, Mark Donahue, Ken Miles, Phil Hill in front the Shelby Cobra but it's time for the Mulsan uh, hairpin or maybe we can sneak inside but Ken Miles is quicker than me with a better racing line as well as Mark Donahue and then Garney so all is postponed to the Indianapolis corners and to Arnage maybe Obviously back then there wasn't the LED light to tell you when change gear. Well the dusk is approaching, as said, 24 minutes will simulate 24 hours. Touched by Mr. Caron with the Shelby Daytona Coupe. First gear for Arnage. And now we'll be all flat out until Maison Blanche or White House. We pass Richard Atwood while changing badly to fifth gear. brakes are not really my business I must admit here you can find the Porsche 911 of the movie Le Mans of Steve McQueen is a nice tribute nice touch made by the original programmer of this uh, 60 version and after almost four minutes we are back on the start finish line in P25 following Dan Garney, Mark Donoghue, Ken Miles, Phil Hill with the four Shelby Cobras that should be easily passed, possibly almost touching. And again, almost sun straight. I was reading uh, some interviews of Jean Rondeau and Ripex Scarolo and all the great drivers, not only French, I mean, of the days, Derek Bell and so on. And one particular thing of Le Mans was that without radio communication with the pit, without electronics and telemetry telling you where you are, where you were. The most incredible thing was feeling alone with your car on Mulsanne Street, flat out. So if you don't mind, from now onwards, from now onwards I will shut up until the end of this simulated 24 hours of the month. And without references like it was back then.
did you see the Mercedes with the back door opened to brake? It was a solution before uh, brake discs. Still, we're doing 250 kilometer per hour. Kilometers per hour. Mr. Moss, touching before White House, Maison Blanche, not really orthodox, I think we are approaching the last lap, 5 laps around 4 minutes and 30 seconds, which makes uh, almost 24 minutes.
silly stupid I've put the second gear in my mind but in reality I've used the fourth Okay, for the last time I think we'll sun straight flat out. Now there will be one more lap. Sorry. Early morning. Harry Shell leading the field. Let's see if we can catch at least David Piper, Caron and Sterling Moss in this lap and the next one. Now the morning is good enough to turn off the headlights. I tell you that drum brakes are not my speciality. And if you insist too much, this is the result. So if it will never happen, will ever happen to create a mod or a season, or whatever, of the 50s. I will create a poll if you want to see me struggling. Even that I'm not British, unluckily. So I'm not used to left gear change. They say it's just muscular memory. Practice like everything. I was uh, listening also to an interview to Mark Webber that said in 2015 he had uh, beauty memory of running by night and smelling the barbecue taste coming from the camping the Raison Blanche so I was wondering if uh, even in the 50s was so Okay, the more you get used to the 250 GTO Ferrari, it becomes a bit, uh, if not easy, I mean, you, you learn how she behaves.
but what a loneliness in fifth gear the last lap I will not reach thanks to my skills Karen Piper most unlucky So if with the 58% of uh, reliability at the center of the top left graph table, whatever, graphic, we are not producing all the maximum power output. Shell wins. Don't remember on which car I've placed Mr. Shell. Here there's a barbecue, nice. And that's it guys, that's it, the first episode of the Road to the Man finishes here, I will say thank you to Ferrari Mechanics, for producing such a great car, we will uh, finish the race, that's it, I don't know Ah, okay, if you click down, you go to the end. Oh, nice, nice. So, let's start from the beginning, I would say. With uh, the great Harry Shell, with the Maserati, head of Mustang and Gregory, Juan Manuel Fangio, Maurice Trintignon, P4, from 1 to 4th position at 200 km per hour average. Maserati really dominated this short race. Farina Ferrari, Shelby, Whitehead, Maston Martin, Jean Berat with the other Maserati, then, then Frolian Gonzalez and Kartling with the first of the Mercedes. Then Isogrifo, Jaguar D-Type, Frer Hawthorne, Salvadori Aston Martin, Von Trips Ferrari, cannot go down, yes, Musso Ferrari, Testarossa, Peter Collins, Testarossa Ferrari, Moss Austin Healy, Austin Healy. David Piper Ferrari 250 GTO, so I've been beaten by David Piper. Caron with Shelby Daytona Coupe or Coupe. As Phil Hill Shelby Cobra. Then Atwood Mueller Aston Martin DB4. Then Garney Shelby Cobra. Mark Donoghue Ken Miles. Bailey with the Jaguar E Type. Murray Walker Triumph TR4. Austin Hill 3000 driven by Childs. Tullius Bob. Jaguar E-Type and the retirements. So we have Colin Chapman with the Lotus 7 Series 1, Peter Levesque, we say hello to Peter, died here in 55, Tony Brooks Aston Martin, Mr. Buell, that is not Red Bull or Red Buell, Triumph TR4 for electronics, if there were electronics. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed at least a different graphic and theme 
compared to the usual you see on Aikis Racing. And uh, I can only say thank you very much for watching. Let's remove the camera for steering wheels and pedals. I can remove also my high glasses. And uh, that's it. Let's at least uh, leave the classification with the winners that are much more important than us. I mean, than me for sure, than you not at all, absolutely. So this was the first short episode on our Aikis Racing community to approach the moment of the 24 hours of Le Mans. I hope uh, you did like it, at least to see something different, something shorter also. And uh, no classification, no ranking today. Who knows, maybe one day we will do a season also themed in the 50s and in the 60s. But so far, thank you very much. Stay very well. Stay into Kino Racing always. See you very soon on Ikes Racing. Best wishes to you all. From Monza, from Marco. Ciao. Bye bye. Stay well.